Welcome to another sketchbook tour. This one is obviously from January 18th, 2021 to June 18th, 21 as well. So that's interesting. It's exactly the five months. Um, so that's faster than I usually move through a sketchbook. This would have been, uh, let me think about this. I would have still been in the 2020 school year teaching at the school at that point in time. And then I finished this kind of early summer, a couple weeks after we finished that school year up. That was a really difficult school year to teach. So let's take a look and see what I was working on. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of studies, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's take a look. So right off the bat, we are getting into some studies. We are working on gesture things. I know that most of these were done actually working from uh, some of those internet sites where you can set it to give you a different pose every 60 seconds, every two minutes or so. There are a couple of those. Uh, line of action might be the one that's still around. I went to find another one the other day and it doesn't exist anymore. So gesture drawings are important. They're not always the most fun to work on. And um, I, I'm not particularly good at them, but they are good in that they teach you very, very quickly how a thing moves. You know, you can see how we get the, the lines of motion of the character here and how they're functioning in this space. Uh, generally, when I get back into gesture drawings, they're pretty, they're pretty rough at first, and then immediately I start blocking things in. Like this one's much better. The legs are a little bit too thick, perhaps, but that drawing makes a lot more sense. So gesture drawings and gesture drawings and gesture drawings. And as we're going to find out as we look through more of my sketchbooks over time, I tend to get distracted with things like that and immediately go into other things. So here we've got some drawings that are probably still from uh, reference of some kind. Well, obviously they're from reference, but I think they're from those same kind of sites. And then also just some simple three-dimensional perspective drawing because it's low stress for me when I'm working on more stressful things. These are likely from reference as well. Uh, I think I was using a felt tip pen here, which are just things that we had in the school that were accessible. This school often provided them. I think they're, they're not such a bad thing to draw with. Now I mostly use them to write dates on the calendar. These are obviously reference-based, and I'm back to timing everything. Was trying to get in my hour or so of art every single day. Uh, these look like probably reference pieces, but I'm unsure. Um, this hair is cool. I uh, have a feeling, yeah, not bad actually. I have a feeling these were probably from reference, or at least parts of them were. These are all from reference. I moved a couple years back. This was still in the early phase of using pencil. Um, and I've moved recently away from using pencil nearly as much. I use pen for most of my drawings. I'm not 100% sure, though I have suspicions as to why. Um, there's this, I have a tendency to overwash my hands. I get eczema and stuff like that on my hands. And it was really, really bad during the pandemic because we had to wash our hands so much. And I think maybe at that point, shifting away from something that got my hands dirty and smudgy towards something that was cleaner, like ink, uh, which seems really uh, antithetical. It seems like a juxtaposition there, but I can work through a, a, a pen drawing without getting my hands dirty. And inevitably when I work with pencil, my hands get dirty. So I think that might've been part of the move. Um, the subtlety with a pencil is a lot higher. I don't struggle with erasing. I know a lot of people are supposed to move away from pencil because you erase too much and you lean on that. I don't have that issue. <laughs> I'm happy to let the ugly just sit. I very rarely erase. Lots of hands, notes on hands. These were also done from websites that give you poses every so often, as were these, 60 second, 60 second, 120 second. I often notated those things. Now I draw frequently enough, I don't find that it's necessary. Um, I think back then, a lot of my notating and documenting all the time I put into my drawing was really just to justify to myself, like, I'm doing this, and to hold myself accountable. And I think at some point I really desired to know definitively that I was improving and know how long it took to improve. Even whether it was true or not, in my brain at some point, I had a desire to be able to give to students and other people a definitive number, like this is how long it took me to get good. And that's just ignorant. I, I was never gonna be able to do that. I don't know if I actually believed it in the moment or if it's just one of those things that I kind of told myself and taught myself. More referential work. Ah, I think these are burrowing owls. They're so cool. Um, what is that? Is that a pill bug or a millipede? I'm not 100% sure. Lizards, because I love lizards. Prairie dog or marmot. Reference work is important. It's not very glorious, but it's good. And then this is also important too. 
to do something like this from reference and then to come to the next page and to try to do it um, from your memory. That's part of how you really learn how to do things. Now you can tell by the faces that I'm, I'm not particularly good at that, or at least I wasn't particularly good at it at that point. But it's important to do things from memory and to do things from uh, reference as well. Yes, these were our uh, stockings, so they were still hanging up in late January last year. Man, I'm going slow. This is going to take forever. Sorry. Um, more hands. Feet. feet are super hard. I actually remember at this point reaching out to some friends of mine who are artists and being like, how do you guys draw feet? Do you know how? And we've shifted to pen now, it looks like. So, to hands. Feet and hands are hard. We look at them so much we can tell whenever anything is wrong with them. Same thing with the human face. Like, if you wanted to pick something to get better at drawing, pick an animal that people don't look at every single day. Like birds. Much easier. Or dinosaurs. Uh, when you draw a, the human face, so much of our brain is built on looking for symmetry, looking for different indicators of mood, of if that person is a threat from a primal standpoint, uh, that if you can supersede that, then you can actually make it look like you're learning how to draw much faster or better than you are. I like pages like this, where we've got the reference stuff, some play stuff, some feet, and then a little puppet and an angry chicken. Feel like that kind of encompasses me in a lot of ways. Good referential stuff. I think all of it's reference based, uh, but very quick, two minutes maybe. Uh, that might be what I'm indicating there. That might be what I'm assuming. I'm not totally sure. Oh, Monster Hunter stuff. This was actually from memory. That's uh, that's Diablo, Snergigante, more Snergigantes, and um, Valhazak. So I, I like working on monsters and dinosaurs and dragons and stuff, and the Monster Hunter games do a lot for me that way. This was kind of fun. I remember reaching out to a friend of mine, a colleague at that point in time, who is a biologist. And so I was asking about the structure inside of the, um, inside of the cranium of creatures like this. If that's from reference, or that's not from reference, that's not bad. Boxes! Um, I'm not sure why they all have these indicators on them. I'm not... That leads me to believe this was actually a physical box in the room. Glasses. More reference stuff. Dodo Gama from uh, Monster Hunter. Other Monster Hunter stuff. I've got some Monster Hunter books I work from. Yeah, that makes sense. A lot more Monster Hunter. Odogaran and Nergigante. No reference. Belhazak. Cute little funky things that don't mean anything. Random reference work from just what was sitting around on my desk, I'm sure. Cool little drawing. I think that one was... I don't remember if that was from reference or not. It kind of looks like it was, but I don't have any memory of it. Um, I think this is a hornbill. Great. Birds are fantastic. I love them. More gesture pieces. More gesture pieces. These are much better than the earlier ones, though. Much more structural. The, um, the contours of the body and the design of the bodies are much, much better. Just a page of randoms. More gestural drawings and figural drawings. It's actually not really gestural, but figural. But like this butt is great. Um, I know it sounds weird, but like the structure of the body is understood. And it took me a long time to realize that like when the leg hooks in to the body, it hooks in and, and it kind of extends and almost that thigh comes up and forms part of the buttocks. That took me a long time to wrap my head around. We were in masks. That's a, those are drawings of students from the time that we were in masks. What a day. Arzuros for Monster Hunter. More figural stuff. Uh, just a collection of birds and random things from memory. This whole page is stuff from my brain. Oh, studying flowers. Um, these were not from reference. None of them. This was all from, ref from reference. I'm positive. Yeah. So this was starting, I think, to really try to draw from imagination. So I would do a lot of drawing things like this from reference, and then I would try to do things later on from imagination. So more birds, flamingos and the like, more hands. I'm not very good at hands, but I've been drawing them more frequently, so I'm getting better. That's the thing is like, you can put a lot of time into studying how to draw a thing. And then if you don't practice it for a while, like that skill just evaporates. It's important that you go back to and you continue to dive into the things that are important to you, the things that you want to do more of. More referential stuff and Glavinus from Monster Hunter. More birds! And we're all in pen. Like I said, we converted to pen a little while back. I have saw that pose so many times. It's one that I looked up for my kids. 
non-reference pieces. I can see I still have a lot to learn, a lot to go. Uh, but, you know, you get some fun things in there. Not everything turns out poorly. Some things are fun and goofy. But there's just a lot of understanding, like, how, does, how do the pieces come together when you're making something like that? I know not everybody learns the same way I do, but I seem to have to understand how all the pieces of a thing come together to understand how to draw it, how to put it together. Which makes sense. Like, the people who have spent a lot of time around a specific thing are generally better at drawing it. This guy's hilarious. It's a little bit like Kraid from uh, Super Metroid. This was actually the... <laughs> this must have been a day where I had no imagination left and I just kept going. I think this is the cover for my podcast on organization, which makes a lot of sense. Known reference, which is nice. Same thing here. Lots of faces. I have not drawn faces much lately because I, I don't enjoy them in the same way I enjoy drawing other things. We're only in February, so most of the time in this sketchbook looks like it was put in early on in the year. Brachidios, Glavinus, more Monster Hunter stuff. Structural understandings of the animals that I'm working from. This is also from Monster Hunter. That's Kuluyaku. Kulu um, cats. Teostra. More figural stuff. This was my birthday. 223. Um, yeah, would have been what? 35 would have been when I turned 35 more figural stuff cute bird I don't remember if that was from reference or not something about the eye tells me it likely was lots and lots of boxes oh this is cool this is from a, this must be two then yeah so this is from a book that I bought on how to draw in 30 days I bought it to help teach my students and I might actually I've had talks with my wife recently I might go through the book with her because it's actually a really really good book for learning the basics of how to draw. And each of these are one of the lessons. So it walks you through very specific things and like how to create them and craft them in three dimensions. And the lessons keep going here. And you can see like everything just keeps getting a little bit more complicated. It's a great book if you don't know how to draw and you want to learn how to draw. I'll probably be covering it here uh, pretty soon in a series of how-to books on the channel. But it's, it's a great book. If you just want to learn how to draw and you don't know anything, it's a good place to start. So it ends here, I think 28, 30 is the last lesson. So my guess would be that's 28, 29, 30, but I don't remember. Oh yes, this is good, this is important. Like just iterating on an idea. These are really simplified uh, monster or dragon skulls, but they're just trying to figure out what does the uh, jawline communicate? Like some of them look goofy or happy or angry. There's a lot to be communicated there. That's my kitchen because I don't know. These teeth are great. I love them. Um, that, I don't, hmm. I think that's my, my dishes here at home. <laughs> that looks like white beard, but bad. More stuff from memory. See, the, the imagination stuff gets better. Oh, this was so weird. Like, trying to figure out how a cyclops would function is so odd. Like, where does the nose go? <laughs> is the, how do the eyebrows function? These are little elemental or Tanari creatures. More reference. More reference. I think these are from life, though. I think I was sitting in meetings and classes drawing people. Some fun stuff. Lots of doodles. We, we jumped at some point. We're now in May. I don't know how that happened or how fast it happened, because that was 216, 223, um, 226, and then 412. So, yeah, we had a almost two-month jump right there. Something was just like crawling on my head. Not comfortable. Try to ignore the fact that it might be a spider. Um, some referential work. I wonder if, oh, that's cool. I like that. I wonder, since that was a big jump, we're now almost at the end of May. Um, I wonder if I did a lot of work because it seems like the quality of work kind of jumps a little bit from, you know, in here from the stuff that was a couple pages back. So I wonder if I was working in other sketchbooks or doing lots of projects or paintings on the side as we got here. We're now June 10th. More referential work. More referential work. More referential work. Lots of notes. That's usually indicative of the fact that I'm working on studying specific things. Yep. More gesture drawings and figural drawings. There's a couple YouTube videos, a couple YouTube channels actually that are really good that provide lots of stuff like this and they cycle it. Yeah. 
YouTube 22. But yeah, there are lots of resources. If you're interested in resources that will help you, uh, we'll just give you like a series of photos or figural stuff, let me know. I can link that stuff down below. That would be really easy to do. Oh, these ones are actually really good. I remember I got really detailed at the end of this session and really going into studying the anatomy and the structure. And um, I started using a lot of lines like this. I still do. And even in my robots and monsters and dragons and stuff is the lines, the way they wrap, tell you where the body is going, the way that the form is moving. It's really important. And then we see the degradation back to the really fast ones again. Oh, and then we end with Tigrex, because why wouldn't we? So anyway, that is the art tour. So thanks for coming along with me on these. I'm going slowly through all of them. Um, there's a couple reasons for this. I've talked about it in previous videos. I think it's important for everybody to see just like what a normal sketchbook looks like. I have some fancy ones, my pen and ink sketchbooks, my mixed media sketchbooks, which you can find in the sketchbook tour uh, playlist on my page. But in addition, it's just important, I think, for everybody to see what things look like. There's beautiful drawings in here and there's crummy, ugly drawings in here and there's a lot of studying. And this is just what a sketchbook is. So um, yeah, thanks as always for watching and tuning in. Let me know what your favorite drawing was in the comments if you don't mind. And uh, have a good one, y'all. See you soon.